This machine vibrates trees to shake off thousands of ripe olives at once. Spain produces roughly half of the world's olive oil. And most of that comes from a single cooperative in the south of the country, where 75,000 families work together to farm their groves. No paramos, siempre hay que estar eh, realizando todo tipo de trabajo. So even though it may not look like it, this industry is struggling. No creo que nos hayamos enfrentado nunca a años tan malos como, como esto. In 2022, Europe experienced its worst drought in 500 years, making it tougher for these farmers to grow the olives they need. Las aceitunas están totalmente secas y arrugadas, ¿no? Farmers didn't have enough water for this year's crops. Some have harvested half the amount of olives they did last year. Y es importante el agua, porque el aceite hoy en día es el principal reclamo económico de las poblaciones. We went to Antequera, Spain, to see how these farmers bottle up millions of liters of olive oil, despite a record-breaking drought. Olive groves stretch across 6.8 million acres of Spain, making the country the largest exporter of extra virgin olive oil in the world. Olive oil production here dates back to the second millennium BC. Andalusia once supplied olive oil for the Roman Empire. But in modern times, Spain hasn't always dominated the market, mainly because the bulk of what it used to produce was a low-quality blend. That changed about 25 years ago, when producers invested in new harvesting practices and machinery. That's what makes today's olive oil higher quality and much more expensive. Benito's family has been growing olives for generations. His grandfather, also called Benito, got into the business in 1908. He collects olives from November to January, then switches to preparing the olive trees for the next harvest. But it's not an exact science. Cada año intentamos adelantar más la cosecha para obtener aceite y zumos de, de primera calidad. Zumos que tengan un frutado intenso. It all starts in the fields. Machines called vibradoras shake ripened olives out of the trees. Cuando tú vibras una pata, todas las vibraciones se van a, a al exterior. Nunca vibra la pata, nunca vibra hacia abajo, hacia la raíz. Vibra hacia arriba. This method doesn't damage the branches or the tree trunk. It just makes the ripe olives fall to the ground. Benito says he's never harvested so few olives in a season. Una sequía tan tan larga, tan horrorosa en nuestra zona. Satellite images show just how dry this area has become. Winter precipitation was down by more than a third. Trees that don't get enough water are tougher to farm. It's harder to pull the olives off the branches because... El olivo está chupando la poca agua que pueda tener eh, el producto, el fruto. Entonces está tomando, es como si estuviera comiendo un poco de, de la aceituna, por así decirlo. In 2019, Benito would gather around 8,000 kilos of olives in a day. Some days this season, he barely gets 1,000 kilos. El olivo, allí hay muchos olivos que no están en condiciones ni de que este año ni del que viene puedan volver a una producción adecuada. It's also stiflingly hot. En mayo, una, una época muy importante para la floración del olivo. En nuestra zona vinieron unas calores que, que quemaron mucha flor. Eso hizo que se perdiera mucha cosecha. Benito says winters are also less severe. And without enough water, the trees won't grow. Pues se ve un poco mermado en su deficiencia y no tiene sustento donde poder eh, recuperar esa energía, digamos. The damage to the trees gets worse every year of the drought. Here's what happens to the olives that do survive. Farmers unload their crops in processing facilities run by Deku, and a conveyor belt carries thousands of raw olives an hour. They're gently washed to remove any remaining dirt from the groves. But the value of their crop isn't set. The olives have to be taste tested first. Extra virgin olive oil is the least processed. It's extracted not through the use of heat or chemicals, but by grinding the olives and pressing out the oil. That's what makes extra virgin the most expensive type of olive oil. But it's also considered healthier because it retains all of its natural vitamins and antioxidants. 
First, machines blend the olives into a thick paste. Pasa unos molinos, unos molinos de molturación de acero inoxidable de martillo que son necesarias molturar la aceituna completamente para luego pasar a un batido. El batido se es necesario para preparar la pasta de de masa de aceituna para la extracción posterior. Then, massive decanters extract the oil out of the mush. They also keep the olive waste, called al perujo. After it's composted, it's used as fertilizer or fuel. Este proceso más moderno es más más sostenible, más ecológico. Por eso ha sustituido al anterior, porque no hay agua residual. Decoup maintains high standards for quality, and Francisco Aguado tries to make sure every bottle leaving this factory is perfect. The new olive oil is stored in huge stainless steel tanks. Nitrogen fills the gap at the top of the canister to keep the oil fresh. It's kept in the dark at a constant temperature. Decoup has the biggest olive oil storage facility in the world. It can hold 300,000 metric tons. That's one third of an oil tanker. The tanks can keep oil fresh for up to two years. Each batch of olives has a distinct fragrance. Pues puedo decir que huele como a campo, a tierra húmeda, un olor muy bonito, muy agradable. Finally, the olive oil is poured into bottles and sealed. Now, it's ready to be delivered all over the world. Spain's olive industry was doing much better just a few years ago. In 2019, Decoup produced over 275,000 tons of oil, more than it could sell. But then, demand for olive oil skyrocketed during the COVID-19 pandemic. Porque eh, la gente se quedaba en casa, eh, cocinaba más en casa y, y compraba un, un buen aceite. This year, farmers project a harvest of under 90,000 tons, about a third of their record-breaking year in 2019. And olive oil remains one of the priciest cooking oils in the world. As of January 2023, a bottle of Decoup's extra virgin olive oil sells for over $10. And just like everything else these days, inflation is squeezing oil producers. Por lo tanto, no pensemos tampoco que en esta situación de precio alto el agricultor está ganando dinero. Farmers like Benito say they're following practices advised by the engineers at Decoup. Farmers can pass through the groves with a tractor. That kicks up dust that coats the trees. El polvo se, se pega a la hoja del olivo y, y produce que no se, se evapora, evapora, transpire el, el olivo. They also plant vegetables in the ground between the trees to maintain the fertility of the soil. And they say they've improved irrigation systems to distribute the little water that's available y no hemos podido llegar a recuperar del, del todo eh, algunos olivos. And without enough water, producing olive oil is going to remain difficult. Lo veo complicado. No, no creo que nos hayamos enfrentado nunca a años tan malos como, como esto. But Benito says he and other farmers will keep trying. Y sin embargo, bueno, pues el agricultor de una forma o de otra se va adaptando y va intentando sacar la rentabilidad máxima al cultivo.